Hi guys, so I want to share a call with you that was made by a lady called Claire to the Sheila Fogarty show on LBC. And Claire was very good at expressing herself much better than I could when it came to anger surrounding Brexit. Now, before we get to the call, I just want to give you a bit of background. The situation in Northern Ireland is becoming more and more serious by the day. It's extremely concerning. There is a real risk that there could be a massive return to violence because what's happening at the moment is loyalist paramilitaries are being egged on by mainstream parties in Northern Ireland on the unionist side. The unionist politicians will use dog whistles regarding the Northern Ireland Protocol, regarding Sinn Féin, in order to convince these elements to commit acts of violence. Now, they're not being explicit about it, but they are using language like for example, Sammy Wilson, who is a member of parliament for the DUP, said that the DUP would use guerrilla, attack, guerrilla tactics against the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now, what happened at the beginning of the year when Northern Ireland remained part of the single market when it came to goods, border checks were set up in Northern Ireland to check goods coming from Great Britain into Northern Ireland. The DUP responded by saying that this is... Uh, a threat to the Union. The Loyalist paramilitaries listened to those words and now they seem to react to be reacting to that. Now of course the the Unionist community is saying that this these acts of violence are not related directly to Brexit, that they're more related to um, the reaction of the police when it came to not enforcing social distancing um, rules when it came to Sinn Féin members of Sinn Féin taking part in a funeral that took place last year. So members of Sinn Féin went to a funeral. They didn't respect social distancing. Some of them apologised for undermining government policy. The police did not seem to uh, take any action against them and loyalist paramilitaries are angry with that and they're venting their anger now. Not when it actually took place, but they're venting their anger now. So this is the response from the unionist community, the unionist parties, I should say, in Northern Ireland. They're painting the picture that young people are angry because the police didn't enforce social distancing rules or didn't punish Sinn Féin for breaking these rules. So let's hear what Claire had to say depressing discussion and we can always rely on you to do the hard-hitting stuff. How many more lives is this accursed Brexit going to destroy before we wake up? We have got to go back into the single union, into the single market and the customs union and oh, get rid Claire, of this it's not gonna border happen. down the Irish Sea from hell. Well, it's not going to happen if you don't want it to happen. At what, sta like, at what stage will the people of Britain say, yes, we're happy with violence taking place in Northern Ireland? in order to make sure we remain outside the single market and the customs union. I have said this before, if the UK, and this was not actually a requirement of Brexit, it was never a requirement of Brexit to leave the single market and the customs union. The problem is that when it came to Northern Ireland, an issue that was ignored by the British government, by Brexiteers, you know, in the run-up to the end of the transition period. Remainers were saying, we need to focus on Northern Ireland. We need to sort out Northern Ireland. And the response from Brexiteers was, stop scaremongering. Stop invoking Project Fear. You're trying to derail Brexit. You're trying to stop Brexit. This was, this was their response. The problem is that when Brexiteers, like the ERG and the DUP in Northern Ireland, wanted the hardest of Brexits, the consequences were as so. And I've talked about this before. You either had a border on the island of Ireland, you had a border in the Irish Sea, or you had the entire UK, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, part of the single market and customs union. Now, if that had been the case, the, the last of those options, there would be no violence today because there would be no checks taking place in Northern Ireland for goods moving from Great Britain into Northern Ireland. Now, the ERG and their friends, the DUP, didn't want the latter. 
So the, uh, the only other two options were a border on the island of Ireland or a border in the Irish Sea. And the UK government have said on numerous occasions that they would not uh, undermine the Good Friday Agreement, which is against the idea of border, a border on the island of Ireland. So the only other option was a border in the Irish Sea. And now you're seeing people like the DUP complaining that there is a border in the Irish Sea. Hell. And sorry, I just want to add, the DUP are using language like, we need to attack the protocol. We need to use guerrilla warfare against the protocol. And then standing back and letting loyalist paramilitaries do their dirty work. You've got young happen. boys, 18 and younger, throwing flames at the police. They're going to destroy their lives forever. They're going to have criminal convictions until they're 90, and they'll never be able to get rid of it. For what? What have we got from it? We've got absolutely nothing, just more, more destruction, more pain. We've got no fishing industry. We've got no exports. We've got no imports. We've wrecked farming. We've destroyed everything for what? We've got one trade deal with... Japan it's, that benefits it's, them. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a bit too early I'm to so say... Angry. i I can hear that. It's a bit too early to say all of those things are a permanent given. OK, but this is the situation now. Remember that Brexiteers said, you know, companies would be banging down the door to get access to the UK market. Brexiteers said there would be no problems. There would be only upsides, no downsides to Brexit. These are the people who convinced the public to vote for this exercise. And those same people, Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Michael Gove, Nigel Farage, haven't gone away. Some of them are running the country at the moment. The people who lied are not being held accountable for those lies. Now we're seeing the consequences of those lies. Boris Johnson last year went to Northern Ireland and he told businesses there will be no border in the Irish Sea. So Boris Johnson either lied or he didn't understand. If he didn't understand, then he has no place being prime minister. If he lied, then that's even more serious because he understood that he was going to create a problem, but he didn't care about the consequences. What you've just said there. Yeah, are, are, are the fishing, is the fishing industry feeling let down months into Brexit? Yes, it is. Um, do farmers have questions? Yes, they do. Is, is there trouble in Northern Ireland and is part of it anyway connected to Brexit? Yes, it is. But what we can't just, you know, Claire, that for the, for the foreseeable political future, we're not rejoining the European Union um, and probably never rejoining the European Union. So I'm we not have to join the European Union. Never joining the European Look, I'm quite skeptical about how the UK would rejoin. Many people ask me, do you think the UK will rejoin? Yes, it will. But the European Union may be different and the UK will certainly be different when the UK rejoins. For example, the UK may not be the UK we see today. It not, may not be the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It could be England on its own or England and Wales together because it's looking more and more likely that Scotland will become independent because of Brexit. Thank Brexiteers for that. You know, unionists should be condemning Brexiteers, not congratulating them. And Northern Ireland is drifting further and further away from the union. And I'm saying go single back to the single market and the customs union. Either way, we, we have to... to come... we, were not, we were told none of this would happen. I know. We were told that the, bo the border would stop any, any pain or any suffering in Ireland, which, which impacts on us all. Ireland is Britain. People keep saying Ireland is a sort of separate entity. It isn't. And we were told none of this would happen. And it's just getting worse and worse. It's quadrupling with no benefit. Where are the benefits? We've achieved nothing. Well, the... Actually... I remember in the run up to, um, well, during the debate with Theresa, when Theresa May was prime minister, I remember Jacob Rees-Mogg saying, we can put an, uh, an electronic border on, on the island of Ireland. It doesn't have to be a hard border. We can have an electronic border. Well, let's hear from Jacob Rees-Mogg about putting an electronic border on the Irish Sea 
to resolve all of these problems. Where is Jacob Rees-Mogg when we need him? Problem is that Ireland is a separate entity, isn't it? The largest part of it anyway, the island of Ireland. It is a separate entity and the Good Friday Agreement created an entity between the two, the North and the South. For, I meant North Ireland. I, I know, OK, but just but it, but it matters, doesn't it, that the whole island is taken into consideration here because no big political upheaval was ever meant to happen without the consent of the South and the North. So they had an in, extra... In and did the Republic of Ireland vote for Brexit? Did the people of, Ar of Northern Ireland vote for Brexit? No, they didn't. Uh, but they're suffering the consequences of Brexit. You know... Brexiteers will say this is the EU's fault, this is the European Union's fault, this is the fault of the Irish government. But once again, the EU and the Irish government and the Republic of Ireland did not vote for Brexit. And even if you want to say, well, Northern Ireland has to go along with it, Northern Ireland didn't vote for Brexit. They didn't want this, but they had to go along with it. Against their will, like Scotland. You can't say... Well, it's, you know, that's what was voted for. We have to enforce it. As I said before, there was nothing in the Brexit vote that meant it was necessary to leave the single market and the customs union. I have to reinforce this point. If Northern Ireland, if the UK had stayed within the customs union and the single market, we wouldn't be seeing border posts on, in the Irish Sea, between Great Britain and Northern Ireland at the moment. This was necessary. This was the consequence of the DUP and the hardline ERG in the House of Commons. They wanted that. Theresa May actually had an option to have the UK within the single market and the customs union. And that would have been perfectly fine. The UK would have been outside the EU. It would no longer be a member. But you wouldn't have the situation we're facing today. But you have to thank the DUP in Northern Ireland and you have to thank the ERG in Westminster for exactly what we're seeing now at the moment. You believe to what? Unification? Is that what the people want? Is that what Brexit was all about? We lose Scotland, we lose everybody? Well, I suspect that a lot of people who have voted Brexit because the polls at the time were telling us this were quite relaxed about quotes, losing Northern Ireland as a result of it. I actually agree with Sheila here. Yes, many Brexiteers never gave a crap about Northern Ireland. Some of them humoured the DUP from time to time. But when it came, and I said this before, when it came down to the Union or Brexit, Brexiteers chose Brexit on every occasion, every time. Union or Brexit, Brexit. There's a risk that we're going to lose Scotland. We don't care. We care more about Brexit. There's a risk we're going to lose Northern Ireland. We don't care. We care more about Brexit. You know, the DUP, their hatred of the EU and everything Irish blinded them. And now they voted, they, well, they supported something that is actually causing the disruption of the union. If the DUP had actually said, to hell with this, we're going to support the UK remaining within the single market and the customs union when they were part of Theresa May's government, or I should say supporting Theresa May's government. We wouldn't be seeing this trouble today, but they wanted this and now they're complaining about it. Well, and they shouldn't I, have and been I relaxed. I you can't just dismiss a whole uh, community like that. They show they had no right to be relaxed. People matter. Northern Ireland matters. Oh, where have we heard that before? I'm just, I'm just so angry about the whole thing. I, I really am angry, depressed. It should never, ever have happened. And I don't see how it can be mitigated or how it can be rectified. I just keep getting worse. And are you, are you surprised at the relative silence from the government on this? Well, what can they say, Sheila? They told us a pack of lies from start to finish. None of this was going to happen. We were going to be richer. We were going to be better off. The, the world will be banging down on our doors to do a trade deal. We've got one trade deal with Japan which benefits them and we get the, we get the crumbs when they've got what they're, they're, they really want, which is a deal with the EU. None of this was supposed to happen. It was all supposed to be better. Claire, Claire. You well done, Claire. I agree 100% with Claire. The charlatans lied and now where are the charlatans? They're ignoring the problem. 
When you bring up the issue of Brexit, they go absolutely silent. They start talking about statues, they start talking about flags, they start talking about wokeness, they start talking about anything in order to distract from the disaster of Brexit. What was the benefit of Brexit? Well, for some people it was keeping immigrants out, and I talked about in another video how well it's also keeping British people out of Spain or out of uh, Greece. This, unfortunately, is creating a very dangerous situation in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland was ignored from the beginning and it was ignored at the end when we're talking about Brexit. I raised it on numerous occasions and unfortunately the response, not from me, not to me, but in regards to Northern Ireland in general in respect to Brexit was stop scaremongering. Northern Ireland will be perfectly fine. No British Prime Minister would put a border in the Irish Sea. And look at, where, look at the situation we're facing today. I'm very concerned because what's happening at the moment in Northern Ireland in the last number of, over the last number of days is loyalist paramilitaries are attempting to provoke Republican paramilitaries, the ones on the Irish side. They want them to react so that they can start another civil war. They want to start another fight. And if the Republicans start responding to what the Loyalists want them to do, then you're going to have the military back in Northern Ireland. The British army are going to have to go back into Northern Ireland once again. Then you're going to have an escalation. And it's going to go back to the way it was before. And all of this because some idiots, some lunatics, some fringe within the Conservative Party wanted to convince the public that they were better off outside the EU. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?